perfect. All right. The 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 the, the one we are having on the screen, the, the is it called the agenda. It's not it's not the right one. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll correct it. Henok, Henok, could you could you display Jose. the right one? Uh, I'm the it's one. Jose, not you. Yeah, yeah Jose, I, I have to, I, to update it. I sent you the the newer yes. the newer uh, agenda. Did, did the one I, I I got from Hongi? Yes. No. Uh, Henok, Henok okay. has just sent you the right okay. one. Okay. 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 Let me try to check it. Yeah. Yeah. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining this webinar, the fifth webinar of uh, IGBA is organizing. I am kindly, before we start, I'm kindly inviting you or uh, all of us to adhere to the following gentleman agreement. Please let us mute our microphones when we are not speaking. And everybody is kindly invited to switch us their videos. Even sometimes when we speak, it is better to switch up your video for a better hearing. And please use the chat board to send your questions. Uh, there is a chat moderator, Davide, who will manage that during the Q&A session. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, the world is facing an unprecedented health, economic, and education crisis. As of the last week of April 2020, Analysis by UNESCO show that 53 countries out of the 55 AU member countries in Africa have been implementing school closure as an effort to control the spread of that little virus. With the closure of schools, governments, teachers, and other education stakeholders in Africa and around the globe are looking for or are implementing alternative education delivery methods to ensure that quality teaching and learning continues in the, this unprecedented situation. Among the alternatives, delivery methods put in place by African governments, we have facilitating delivery of distance learning programs through television and radio, encouraging the use of online tutorials through forums or fora, such as webinars and podcasts. Teachers in our continent have not been left out in the development of means to overcome the, the learning challenges in this period. Indeed, some teachers have initiated several distance learning mechanisms to ensure that learning continues, including preparing take home packages for students, establishing school based online teaching and learning platforms using social media platforms like WhatsApp and low tech options, such as SMS services to share learning materials and tests. But with school closure, how can teachers, educators in general, conduct learning assessment? Education experts agree that learning assessment system provides valuable information that can be used by countries and both teachers and students and even parents to improve the levels of learning achievement. As a matter of fact, assessment is a key component of learning because it helps students learn. When students are able to see how they are doing in class, they are able to determine whether or not they understand course material. Assessment can also help motivate students. It is in this context that UNESCO IGBA, whose mandate is to strengthen the capacities of teaching staff and teachers, and also teacher policies in Africa, has organized this webinar to help share information and experiences on distance learning assessment options being used or that can be used by primary and secondary teachers during school teacher. IGBA, as its mandate call for, will continue to make every effort to contribute to the training of qualified teachers and school leaders who are capable of adapting to change and whose voice counts in improving the education system. It is only this way that we will achieve sustainable development goals, SDGs, as well as the objectives of the continental education strategies 
for Africa, CESA. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome you to the fifth webinar organized by IGBA, and let us have a fruitful exchange. Thank you very much. So for this webinar, we have invited experts, as usual, experts on the subject. One of them is Ms. Huang Lethu, Program Specialist at UNESCO HQ Paris, and she will make us the honor to provide the keynote speech. Then we'll have three speakers, among whom we can cite Dr. Hungi Njora, Senior Project Officer at IGBA, and who helped a lot organize this webinar. I would say who monitored the organization of this webinar. Thank you, Doctor. We have Mr. Angel Kalim Minwa, Focal Point of ADAS Network for African Learning Assessments, who is based in Zambia. The last speaker, but not least, is Dr. Pedi Anawi, Project Coordinator of Education International African Region. He is based in Ghana. And the closing remarks will be made by, by our director, the director of IBA, Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over the floor to Ms. Huang Lethu for the keynote speech. So Ms. Huang, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Salyu. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very, I'm very happy to be here today to, to share with you um, some initial findings and to... Hello. Yes, Mr. White, Hello. Do you hear me? You can hear. Yes. yes. Okay. okay. My name, my name is Why. I'm, res I'm here to represent Director of Zanzibar Examination Council. Ah. Zanzibar. Okay, so you'll be you'll be speaking. I just I just get a link now. Yes. Okay. So we'll give you we'll give you five to ten minutes to speak. How many minutes do you give me? Five to ten minutes. Okay. We'll give you we'll give you maximum ten minutes to speak to make your presentation. It's okay. Can you hear me? Salu. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, maybe we could just have how continue. Yes. So please, uh, we'll give you ten minutes after, but please uh, ask everybody to mute their microphone if they are not speaking. Please continue. I'm sorry for that. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, next, next slide, please. Yeah. As you know, uh, in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we see that 192 countries have taken the measures to implement countrywide or localized closures of education institutions be they kindergarten, schools or universities. As of today, uh, an estimated 91.4% of the world total of enrolled students and learners have been affected. In the context of the prolonged school and university closures, consideration for handling exams and timetable assessments are high on the policy agenda of many governments. Several coping strategies are being adopted in different regions, which may include, for instance, organizing exams with special arrangements, consideration, uh, sorry, considering cancellation, postponement, online assessment, or implementing alternative approaches for validation and certification. This is uh, especially the case for high stakes exams and assessment where, for example, passing the test would allow the student entry into a higher grade or permission to graduate, and many of which are quickly approaching as the current school year ends in May and June in many countries. So the question for us is, how should learning assessment be conducted during school closures? Should the exams be maintained, cancelled, postponed, or what, and if so, how? The list of such a question is long and doesn't seem to stop there, nor to concern only student or teacher. 
I'd like to share initial findings and recommendations from UNESCO Global Analysis, which provide a, nap, a snapshot of decisions taken by governments with regard to high-stakes exams and timetable assessment in this particular context. Next slide, please. The typical and possibly the most common response by many countries to COVID-19 is a shift to distant learning, but it is not that straightforward as it presents a key concern with equity and inclusion. That means that of connectivity and of availability of digital devices. The following, I mean, as you, the following slides uh, illustrate these disparities on the basics of two key indicators, the share of households with access to the internet in blue, the share of households with access to a computer in red. We can see the disparities that exist worldwide and between countries on the basics of development status. The question is, when teaching and learning shift to distant modalities, should assessment also shift to distant mode? And if so, how? Online assessment um, is immediately thought of as a, as a solution, but what we are seeing here clearly makes us think, what can be the viable options for countries in Africa then? Next slide, please. So to understand the country's policy responses to the COVID-19 pandemic in education, in particular, those concerning learning assessment, UNESCO has collected data on some 73 countries worldwide why different, from different sources of data during this time of school closures and conducted a global analysis of the policy measures being taken to manage high stake exams uh, and assessment, which shows that many of the countries had chosen to postpone or reschedule the exams. Uh, here, according to our um, data, there, uh, there were 38 countries of them, 10 from Europe and North America, and 18 from Asia and the Pacific, uh, which offer this option. On the other hand, many countries in the Arab region chose to maintain exams on schedule. There is a smaller number of countries that decided to cancel the exams. Um, this global analysis also makes clear five strategies that are being adopted. First, the most common strategy being the postponement, rescheduling of examinations. In, in Brow, sorry, can, can you go back to, to, to the previous slide? Yes. The second option, uh, is a, I mean, very few countries have opted for maintaining examinations, except in the Arab world. The third strategy is uh, cancellation. In a few cases, uh, we see here on, on, on the slide um, uh, with the light green. The fourth option is the uh, country go for mm -hmm. online uh, examinations in master right. color. And the fifth strategy, I mean, some countries are considering alternative assessment method to replace examinations in yellow. The results show some similarity as observed from the past emergencies due to uh, both sudden short life crises, for example, political protests, hurricanes, earthquake, etc., and longer, more severe crises, for example, civil wars, armed conflict, disputes, epidemic disease, such as SARS, H1N1, Ebola, etc. And there are some valuable lessons learned from the past experiences. Next slide, please. This slide shows some of the relevant lessons here. First, postponement and rescheduling 
are common choices for exam under crisis situations and should correspond with the speed and scale of the outbreak. Regardless of interruption in teaching and learning, monitoring of student learning still needs to be conducted. Um, as you know, interrupted teaching and learning inevitably make student learning assessment difficult. But this challenge can still be tackled by combining and summative assessments and or allowing exceptions to the rule. For example, offering um, uh, 50 percent concession exams or uh, awarding full marks for students for practical exams. The common response is to determine students' grades based on the evidence of their standard of work, which may include teacher assess coursework, practice mock tests, previous academic attainment, and other factors. However, there is concern that this approach may not be entirely fair, since the previous attainment may not represent the student's current performance teacher bias could be an issue, and alternative grading could lower the competencies normally assessed in exam. Um, the other lesson that we learn is that formative continuous assessment can be used as a, as a solution to cancel high exec exams. Uh, a sample of the literature points to formative assessment as a solution during crisis, specifically continuous assessment for coaching ongoing progress, identifying learner strengths and weaknesses. The most efficient way to continuously assess is online. Uh, there are many online guides, courses and tools for creating digital lesson plans and e-activities, including quiz, polls and surveys. However, not all students and teachers may have access to devices and the internet and may not have the capacity to quickly shift to online learning. If necessary, um, continuous assessment can be conducted by other means, such as speaking through telephone or mobile cell, or texting or sending audio or video recordings, or distributing packets of learning materials and textbooks to students without online access to follow up uh, on the student learning over time. Um, the last but not least uh, um, lesson that we learned here is that ensuring assessment and exams are conducted in a fair and reliable way. Adopting a combination of strategy, including introducing alternative approaches to exams and validation of learning appears to be an effective strategy when exams have to be cancelled, postponed or rescheduled. However, they work only if they are conducted in a, a fair and reliable manner and control for teacher bias. A risk of formative assessment through um, strategies such as anonymous submission of coursework, peer assessment, evidence-based grading, and flexibility in accepting grades for admission to university. They should also be conducted when students are available with fair alternative arrangement for those who are sick, having caring or home duties or who must work, as well as be feasible for teachers and appropriate for the subject being assessed. Next slide, please. Um, there are some common challenges emerging which um, require our attention here. Um, here on the slide, I I've listed uh, four of them. Uh, not, uh, we see that not all subjects and competencies can be assessed online or through distant modalities, for example, like a through telephone. Um, there, um, there, are, there are also questions of fairness and feasibility in alternative assessment methods. There is also the issue of inequity, um, issues like a digital device, less resources and capacity, and also bias in teacher assessment, which is why 
we see, for example, um, like the shift to, to last scale test, um, and also the issue of having uh, ways to offset the bias, for example, through anonymous work online or peer grading as well. Um, the, the other challenge here is the need for assessing students' progress to, uh, to identify learning loss or gaps and um, remedial and accelerated classes to offset these learning loss or gaps upon school opening. Next slide, please. Next, next have, slide, please. Well, you have two minutes left. Okay. Well, yeah. Yes. Two minutes left. Thank yes, you. thanks. Okay. Then the yeah. next question for our interest here is what are the factors for countries to consider when it comes to options for exams under the crisis situation? From our analysis, um, these are factors um, as you've seen on, on the screen, uh, such as financial costs, culture, ICT infrastructure, whether there's availability of uh, digital devices or whether digital and non-digital teaching and learning resources are available or not. Also that the issue of uh, capacity and um, the complementarity of different strategies. Next slide, please. The overall guiding principles to, uh, um, to guide decisions on how best to manage high stack exam uh, and assessment at key cycles of education is that any decision regarding assessment, recognition, and validation of learning during the period of school closures must be guided by concern for equity, fairness, and inclusion. Next slide, please. And here the last, my last slide, and I just would like to uh, present to you um, some uh, policy recommendations based on uh, this comparative analysis and on what we are learning through policy dialogue with ministries of education. Um, so I, I stop here and thank you for your um, attention. Thank you very much, Huang, for this uh, brilliant presentation and uh, the informative uh, inputs you have provided us. So now I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Hongi Njora, Senior Project Officer for his presentation. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, colleagues and friends. I hope you can hear me well. Can, can I have my presentation on the screen, please? Hanok. Hanok, go ahead. Uh, as you are waiting for that, uh, I'm... Uh, the presentation that I'm going to give, uh, some of the aspects that have already been spoken to by Hong have already been covered. So I'll just compliment on what she said and maybe add a few more things. Okay, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Hello, can you hear me? Jose? Yes, Sungi. Jose is uh, displaying it. Yes. Jose. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay. When, when, okay, now it's okay. When you talk about okay. assessment, okay, there is, you have skipped one slide. Go back to the to the previous slide then. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay then. It's okay now. Okay, I can see it now. They 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 want to. As we go back, Jose, the purposes of assessment include we assess students so that we can we can get we can inform decision on student promotion or progress through grades or placement into the university and other higher institutions. We also assess to inform the teaching and learning process and and also to give feedback to students and other inter internal users, such as parents, and also to communicate the level of achievement to external users, such as employers. And here I have a question, which of the above has a direct impact on learning? I leave that one to, for you to answer, but for me, 
B and C uh, have got an impact on uh, the quality of learning. Next, please. There are two types of assessment that are involved in education. And uh, the first one is the formative assessment, and the second one is the summative assessment. The formative assessment is what we usually call continuous assessment, or what happens frequently within the classroom or regularly. The, form the summative one can also happen within the school, but it happens at the end of a cycle, or it is the one we also talk about when they talk about national exams. So for us as teachers, we are mostly interested with the first one, the formative assessment. That's what we also have an interest in the second one, but within the classroom situation, the first one is the more interesting for us. Next, please. And the reason for that is because formative assessment help us to improve our teaching methods and also help to inform students where they are weak and where they are doing well. So I've have that table, most of you have seen it being educators about the differences between summative and uh, formative assessment. I would like to look at the last point there where on the formative assessment, where we are saying that uh, it's a good, although it's a very powerful way uh, tool for the teachers, but we need little teachers on this area on how to do it. Next, please. Some key points about classroom-based formative assessment, classroom-based. In this particular webinar, I wish we could concentrate a bit more on a classroom-based formative assessment because I think that would be the major challenge during this time of the pandemic. Uh, the formative, um, the classroom-based formative Hello. assessment requires that, can you unmute that person, please? requires that act they, they require active communication between the student the teacher and the family not that it takes into consideration that students are at a different level and the student assessment data can be documented that's what even hong said it can be documented as evidence for progress so if you have a strong data or rich data on classroom based formative assessment you don't have to worry about summative assessment if exams are cancelled, you can use that one to inform decision. Next, please. Some possible options for formative assessment during school closure. The formative classroom assessment. We we can we we talk about um, we can talk about e-platforms like just as Hong talked about, and this uh, e-platform can either be teacher-directed or self-directed. If they're teacher-directed, that those are the ones that we have, like the Google Classrooms and the likes. The, the informative assessment is almost the same as what we have been doing in the classroom, because the students and the teachers can interact actively, and they can even see each other and ask each other questions and move forward. But, but if we, have, so we can also have it as self-directed, so that uh, we have uh, everything preloaded up in a website or in a gadget or a device, and then the student can follow the lessons from there. With, with this kind of arrangement, we would require that uh, before the student move from one section of the topic to the next section, they must have met yeah. some minimum skills uh, or competencies so that uh, they are allowed to go to the next level. And you can also incorporate learning examples into the system and therefore students can see where they are going wrong based on those examples and uh, see where they are uh, they are doing well and how to move forward. And preferably so the system would work well online, but we can also have it offline where we can be updating the gadgets um, as need be. As mentioned at the bottom there, this kind of system would require ICT uh, investment on ICT devices and also investment on teacher ICT capacity as well as the students. Next, please. The some of the options for the low or what we call non-tech options. You could also assess students uh, by take home test packages. If there is no where you just print and put your package and send them, then they would maybe do that and return them to you. And uh, you could also put the documents on our website where the students can see the questions and they can answer and then 
post back to you or you can post on, on the social media or you can have an SMS based road tech platform like the ones you usually get uh, on service where you are asked this can be very effective in uh, administering like multiple choice items uh, for this kind of uh, system to work parental involvement is very important parents must support the students and also support the teachers so that the the teach the student the, is monitored by the parents from home so that they are the ones doing these quizzes they are the ones completing the assessment task not somebody else next please uh, what about summative assessment this one i don't think we need to talk about more because they uh, hung covered quite well on uh, in the presentation but i would also say they could be divided into high tech where the exams can be online and you can have a system where the student can log in and uh, ensure that this is the person actually doing the test and then the what time they're taking the test and how long and uh, and so on but this will also require the student to be uh, IC, the ICT capacity of the student and as well as well as the teacher to be quite good next please for the low options again home covered quite well you could have the teachers uh, for, for 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 the lot for the not high tech high tech exam I mean, i'm not talking about national exam i'm not talking about the regular teacher summative assessment conducted by the teacher at the end of the term or at the end of the week or the end of the year not the national exams you could still have a uh, Teacher uploading the test on the website and uh, the student will respond to, to, to those items for marking. And the road tech would be take home packages where the, stitch, the students will be, uh, will, the parents will be helped by the students. Uh, parents will help the students to take the test. Next, please. Next, please. Oh, I think, I think that's it. For now, Salim, over to you. Yes, thank you very Come much, Doctor Doctor Hongi, oh, for this uh, presentation and for the differentiation between the types of assessments and the different options that can be offered. Yeah. Whether we are using high tech, low tech, or not. Uh, so thank you very much. So now I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Angel Kaliminwa from Adea, based in Zambia. So, Mr. Angel, you have the floor. Angel? Can you hear me now? Yes, you can. Hello? Yes, Angel. You can, you can hear me. Yes, you can. Okay, first I must apologize. I, I was struggling to get uh, to join the meeting. Are you able to hear me? Yes, Hello? yes, we can hear you very well. Very clearly. Okay. That Okay, I was saying I must apologize. I've been struggling to join the meeting. This is when I'm getting through to, to the meeting. And uh, I also don't know what has been discussed so far. I'm just uh, joining. And I think looking at the, the information that was given, I came up with something that I would like to share. But j just from the onset, I would like to inform the, 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 the meeting that um, the views that I'm going to give are the public views not necessarily representing the like the government of the republic of zambia but since i'm here on, on behalf of adair what i'm giving is um just giving the public information that has come through due to covid 19. and uh, i think the way i've organized my work is such that i'm going to look at the three questions that were posed and the one was talking about uh, how prepared the, the, the government is in terms of capacity building and all that in terms of responding to the COVID-19. I think I'd like to share some of the things that have taken place. For instance, the National Broadcaster, which is uh, a public broadcasting uh, house, has launched a channel in collaboration with the Minister of Education. The Minister of Education controls the materials that go in there covering all the, the levels from uh, primary, secondary up to tertiary. Everyone will be tuned in and will be listening to that and watching. And then they have also negotiated that for the first two months it's free because we don't know when the COVID-19 will be controlled. At, at least for the first two months, it should be free as long as somebody has the, chance, the, the, the signal, they'll be able to, 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 to watch that.
And then the other thing is that within the Ministry of General Education, there's a director which is responsible for open and distance learning. They have also negotiated with a company called Zambia Telecommunications Company to launch a um, another the, uh, portal where learners and teachers and the public can log in and then start following the materials which are being put there. And apart from that, the same, the same company, which is a mobile uh, a company, uh, a public company, has offered that during this period, on three days in a week, they will give free bundles uh, uh, and also free space for speaking and also free space for SMS so that um, teachers and learners, including the parents, can communicate during that time so that teachers can actually send the materials to the learners. The materials, I mean, the learners respond together with their parents and then they send back to the teachers. The teachers mark and then they send back. So this company is providing that so that um, it's possible for parents and learners to keep in touch. Apart from that, uh, I work for Examinations Council of Zambia. This institution has also launched what is known as um, it's called it's it's being called a smart revision where we put up a portal in collaboration with the same company zambia telecommunications company and everyone can log in and uh, there we have some kind of uh, uh, assessments taking place where some virtual teachers are working out the solutions and then this it's it's interactive so that learners and the different levels are specified so that learners are not uh, kept backwards. But the important thing is that it requires the involvement of parents because uh, when learn learners are at home, what we have observed is that uh, parents need to help them in terms of tuning into those channels and also being able to follow through together with the parents. Then apart from that, uh, teachers are using all sorts of platforms, including um, platform like WhatsApp and all that, as long as somebody has a, has a cell phone, they're able to get the materials. And what the other thing that schools have done is that um, you register your children on e-learning platforms with those schools so that the schools don't keep lose touch with their learners. And then you keep on uh, communicating that. Then coming to the next question, which talked about uh, the, how teachers in the rural areas are being helped and all that. I think the first thing I'd like to mention is that here, the, the government engaged all the, the mobile providers and the, the internet providers to lower the costs. In some cases, like the Zambia Telecommunications Company is able to give for free so that anyone who has a cell phone or a television or a, 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 or a, a laptop of some kind, regardless of where they are. Because in terms of the signals, like the, the cell phone signals, they are everywhere, including rural areas. So everyone is covered for that. So negotiating the cost to come down. And if someone is not literate in terms of computers, they are using the cell phones. If they are not uh, literate with that, they are using the television where someone else is doing it and then the teachers are just, and the parents are working together with the parents. Apart from that, um, when the government uh, established it, I mean, uh, helped to uh, come up with this television channel, the important thing that government had already, in fact, that was not because of COVID, decided to have uh, uh, communication of signals all over the country. This is one of the companies which agreed to do that. And that's the platform on which they are riding. And apart from, apart from that, we know that cell phones are everywhere throughout the country. And then you find that the school authorities are not just sitting idle. They make sure that they are, because they understand that during this time, and children are just open to anything. And they are, they are there to make sure that they keep in touch. And the fact, like, for instance, where my children go, the, the teachers are always in touch with me and making sure that I, I see what the children are getting and at the same time send back and all that kind of. In situations where the parents are not literate, usually the, the important thing is that just for them to be there to, to, to encourage their learners. And uh, in, it, it, the, the learners will be encouraged because the parents are there, even if the parents are not literate enough to help them in terms of uh, the materials that are being uh, given to them. And then uh, apart from that, we have within the Ministry of General Education, what is known as EBS, Education Broadcasting Services, that has been there all the time. And what's happening now is that they are also helping to send these materials, including assessments to the learners and then back to the, to the, to the teachers. Now, what has happened is that because this one, the signal also goes far and beyond, but where areas where where they don't reach we have what are called community radio stations that are opened by private individuals churches and different ngos so they work in collaboration with that also to take the materials so that those materials are also broadcast so that everyone has an opportunity to get those materials so that is um 
and then if I go to the the last question, that's the way I organized my work. The last question, which was talking about um, the, how the national uh, assessments and national exams are envisaged to be done. Here, what we are looking at is that, okay, in the first place, everything else was, let me just say, everything was closed. Bars, nightclubs, schools, colleges, universities, uh, casinos, churches, everything, mosques, everything was closed. But what has happened is that the government is not just sit, sitting high, idle. For instance, uh, I, I said I work for the Examinations Council of Zambia. The Minister of General Education has engaged the Examinations Council of Zambia to see how best we can tune and change the, the, the timetables so that we suit the time when schools will resume. Then apart from that, the ministry keeps updates all the time when they, they make speculations of when they think schools will reopen and they keep informing the Examinations Council of Zambia. And in fact, we are part of that negotiation so that when whenever anything comes up where they feel okay for now looking at the way the, the COVID-19 is moving our it's speculation is that by this time maybe it will have come down and the schools may open and they communicate that information and with that we are able to keep on adjusting and then apart from that you find that um, the timetables uh, every day I mean every time the update is giving we are told, OK, if we open at this time, so much time will be required to recover the work that children have lost. And therefore, uh, you will be able to, to, to give them the work that is required. And then apart from that, uh, all institutions, all teachers, including investors and all that, are allowed to continue with their program so that even teachers who are not very good at ICTs, these universities and colleges are busy sending them the materials which they can use to help them move abreast with the rest of, of, of the others. And then um, what I would say is that um, it is something that I think has opened up avenues we didn't think of because when things are, are normal, we didn't seem to look at all this. But now what has happened is such that when we go through all that, it just opens up and we come to realize that there are so many channels and platforms that we can use. And we realize that actually that we have a lot of uh, facilities and resources that we have not utilized. But uh, the, in conclusion, what I would like to uh, say is that as an examining body, for instance, the government tells us that we, or in fact, from our own, we say we prepare as if there was no COVID-19 so that we have the materials that we can share with the public so that whenever the public demand, we actually give out that information without necessarily having to say we haven't prepared all that. And then apart from that, we have realized that it's very important. Some of the materials we have, we need to attune them so that they are uh, adopted to the method of delivery, apart from the way it has been the traditional method. And those are the areas where I think um, we need to share a lot of um, uh, 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 skills. And then apart from that, what I've noticed that the important thing is that there must be a guardian or a parent to be with the learners whenever they are given that work on a platform. Because, you know, on these platforms, there are other more interesting things that children get attracted to, apart from the assessments and all the other materials that you, you send, which are meant for uh, to be educational materials. Then other than that, in the Southern African region, for instance, in my, or in my case, there are other channels which run educational programs. And with my children, I'm able to uh, tune into those when I'm not listening to Zambian ones, where, for instance, science and mathematics, these almost are common uh, across different countries. They are, as long as they are, they are in English, which my children understand and I also understand, I'm able to move around along with the children and we are able to move together. I think uh, um, this is all I wanted to share because uh, I wasn't, uh, I didn't know so much when I read the the, the note that was sent, it directed that we needed to share this kind of information. But should there be more information that requires to be shared, I'll be ready to do that. But so far, this is what I, I plan that I would share with the meeting. I end there. Thank you very much, Mr. Angel. I think what you have provided is consistent with the questions we asked. And thank you for sharing information related to strategies that are happening in Zambia, including the position So now I'm going to hand over the floor to Pedi Anawi, Dr. Pedi Anawi from Education. Thank you very much, Salim.
Good afternoon, good morning to everyone, depending on wherever everyone is. My name is Peggy from Education International, which is the Global Federation of Teachers Unions. Uh, I would like to thank Ikiba for involving us in this webinar. Uh, this is at the same time an opportunity for us to share, but also to learn from other uh, agencies. And I've been learning a lot since the first presentation. Right now, uh, for the sake of time, I will not be, be able to go through all the slides. I will jump to slide seven to start there, if you allow me. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, uh, I think the first, the second, and the third presentations have already answered a number of things that I have developed in the former in the previous slide. Now I'm going to focus on this. Uh, we in Education International, we have been organizing webinars with our affiliates internally uh, among the staff and with other agencies to share experience on how to handle education issues during this COVID-19 crisis. We have also undertaken a number of uh, surveys to collect information and data from our affiliates on how education is being impacted and how possible we can find solutions. And I'm going to present a few, next slide please, a few of the results. And then at the end, try to link it with the assessment. Well, one of our questions in the survey was, about government measures to minimize the impact of school closure. On the global trends, the respondents, about the, the majority of them, 71%, reported that students were being taught by online means. And almost half of them reported that teachers provide lessons, lesson content, and are in regular contact with parents. But we have some concerns over there. Uh, one is lack of support for teachers. Only 26.9% reported that teachers were being supported to access appropriate resources for the transmission to transition to online or distance learning. And then we have also a concern on equity. This online or distance learning is going to exacerbate the inequities that were already existent between urban and rural between the rich and the poor. Can we move to the next slide, please? And then at the Africa regional level, 88.9% indicated that all schools and other education institutions have been closed during this COVID-19. And 5.6 indicated most schools and other education institutions have been closed. As you can see, the closure affect the majority. And about the question, uh, what action has the government taken? 0% indicated no action has been taken, which means at least government are pro well are aware that something needs to be taken. Can we move to the... Thank you. Now, we ask about the concrete measures government have taken to minimize the impact of the COVID-19 crisis on students' education. Almost half of the respondents only mentioned, this is on the 11% The sound is breaking, Eddie. Hello. Hello. Mr. Pedi? Hello. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we lost you. Can you hear me, please? Loud and clear now. OK, thank you. Uh, this shows the challenges we are having in providing online education. So 16% of indicated teachers are being supported with access resources, both in curriculum-based and 38.9, almost 
indicated no action had been taken is considerable. 50% indicated that other means, such as television, radio, uh, and rescheduling of the school year has been used as a measure. Can we move to the next slide, please? Well, uh, on the question government, about the government capacity building provided to the teachers with skills for provision and assessment of a, a distance learning, well, we had a webinar uh, last week. This is not from our survey. But our webinar brought together our representatives from the six zones in Africa. And they indicated that uh, there is no capacity building provided by government either to deliver online courses or to conduct online assessment. And very few indicated that teachers were actually involved in whatever ministries are taking as measures. Can we move to the next slide, please? Now, our question, uh, there is uh, this issue on remote teachers, in, teachers and learners in remote areas. Our representative from the zones indicated that educators and learners from rural and remote contexts are most victimized and marginalized. This is what I was saying earlier. This is what our survey has revealed, that this crisis and whatever measures we are taking to provide uh, distance learning is going to increase inequities that already existed. Please, can we move to the next slide? Now, about the government's preparation to ensure continuity of national assessment and national examination during the current crisis, uh, I think from our exchange last week, about 50, uh, 75, sorry, 75 percent indicated that focus and priority from government ministries of education are put on exam classes as they are planning to provide distance learning. And I have a small anecdote on this. Our colleagues from Senegal have written a joint uh, protest letter to the Minister of Education saying that there should not be a segregation. If there is a solution for education, it should be education for all, not only for exam classes. Well, uh, there's no indication for exams during the lockdown, as per reports uh, we received from our representatives. Now, strategies envisaged by governments are silent or unclear about learning assessment and examinations during the lockdown, as far as we know from EI. Please, next slide. I okay, think it's the last have, one. We have two minutes here as we are concluding. Thank you. Thank you, Salu. I hope I will make it. Now, in conclusion, we in AI, we think that with so many school closures and uncertainty, uh, well, our additional long-term role will be to focus on the world we want post-pandemic. That means that global education union led back to school readiness responses with resources and rights for all. And we have in mind that either with COVID-19 or without COVID-19, our first focus globally is SDG4, and at the continental level is the CESA. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dr. Pedi, for that information on behalf of Education International. And uh, the school we want after pandemic, we hope that we will get that very soon. So this being said, I am going to see with whether uh, Mr. Wei Juma from Zambia could uh, make a presentation. Mr. Juma? Yes, yes. Do you hear me well? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very can much. Can I hear from you? Yes, I can hear you. And I doubt whether you hear me well. Yes, please go ahead. We hear you I, loud and clear. I apologize. My, vo my voice is not good. And. Um, we, we call this in a very short notice. We, we have not completed our presentation, but once we are through, 
we promise we send to you to share with others. Right? Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, my name is Vwai Kejuma from Zanzibar, and I'm not from Zambia. So, from Zanzibar. And Zanzibar is part of Tanzania. Uh, we have our own examination council. In, in Tanzania, they have a, a national examination council, uh, abbreviated NECTA. So, we are also affected by COVID-19, and uh, government decided to close all the schools, and all the colleges, and all the universities. So we are part of the work and we are affected. Uh, I want to talk about the strategies uh, by which government has taken. Uh, one, uh, in order to ensure that learning take place, uh, particularly for students who are expected to sit for examinations. Uh, the Minister of Education has been receiving directive from central government to prepare a, a programs. And these programs, hello? 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 Yes, yes, yes we can hear you. you. Can we hear you? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. can hear you. Go ahead, please. Oh, okay, please, please, please. So, Minister of Education has formed a small teams of directors uh, to design uh, learning programs, particularly for students who are expected to sit for exams. And uh, then they have established talking with the Minister of Information, Tourism and Heritage, because this minister is responsible uh, for media, uh, radio and uh, televisions. So that we are doing this in co collaboration with the other ministry to ensure that there is an access for all students uh, to get to do learning while all schools are closing. So this is very important for us. But not only that, now we have a programs are aired in the radio as well as in the television. And uh, it, Zanzibar Examination Council has prepared special questions uh, that has been submitted to the ministries and the ministries will distribute it to the old school and teachers will circulate to the student. And teachers are being used uh, to ensure they are doing correction for them. They are monitoring, they are monitor all what is going in terms of the progress. So, so far that is very good. And uh, also the government has tried to prepare programs to ensure parents or guardians are being involved full uh, while they are at home. And they ensure that they are monitoring their children, their spare times, they make sure they provide all the devices like uh, uh, phones, uh, access to television, and try to monitor and manage their time so that their kids could be remaining at home while receiving their education. And uh, also, what is good so far, there is a circulation of the material uh, through television, and schools have formed small groups for WhatsApp, and teachers are circulating the, the material for the kids, including questions. And, uh, and another approach that so far, that with the, us as a big challenge, is for those that have been presented by others people, uh, those who are living in a rural area and those who are living in a remote area, the accessibility is still uh, limited. So that's a big challenge. And I would like uh, what will be the advice from UNESCO for us. Although we are a small island, but still there are areas that the accessibility for the kids are, are not good at all. And I'm sure those who are living in that particular area will be affected because they will never receive materials, they never get access in WhatsApp, they never have electricity. So please advise us how could we go, uh, whether we could have a package or whatever. So that's a, a challenge that we are having in particular uh, in, 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 while we are facing COVID-19. 
But we thank Zanzibar government, a revolutionary government for allowing us to use national televisions and the ministries is trying to ensure that we have an access of air times in both uh, televisions and as well as in, as, as well as in, in, in radio. And, uh, but we are still thinking because so far we, we are having about 118,000 uh, students, 707. If these are the ones that have been registered to sit for examination and they have started only one semester and the semester was not also completed because remember when we have this effect is between February and March and this is we, we are in May. So studying or completion for them is a bit uh, a bit difficult. So we are we are afraid of having double cohort, but we are praying to ensure COVID-19 is being cleared and uh, more measure are being taken by the government to ensure there is no more spreading. So school will be uh, reopening, but we don't know yet when this will be happen. But we join with the government effort, with the LGO, with the UNESCO to ensure people are safe, kids are safe, and they are getting access uh, to, to our education. So with us, a very brief one, I thank very much UNESCO for giving us time to talk, but also to get access to other presentation. And they all are very good one. And we have learned a lot. And there are a number of strategies that I have jotted down here. I will share with the ministries. And I say thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so very much, Mr. Wai Juma. Uh, from Zanzibar, not Zambia. Yes. It is very yeah, Zan Zanzibar. Uh, Zanzibar, yes. Yes. And Zanzibar. thank you for, for, for sharing with us the efforts that are being made in the island and the challenges you are facing. And yes. also your yes. question to UNESCO is well heard. So thank yes. you very yes. much. May now I have one I'm question going to you? Sorry, uh, I have uh, one question. Hello? Hello? Can you write the question in the chat board, please? Yes, I will write this one and, and forward to you. And okay, what please, will please. be the next step then? We, we, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that. I'm going oh. to give the floor to, we'll come to that with the, with the clear information. Uh, thank you very much indeed, sir. Thank I'm you glad to, yes. Yeah, we are glad to, to have you. Okay. So uh, we're going to the question and answer session which is monitored by uh, Davide from Dakar office. So Davide, yes. you have the floor. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you, Saliu. Uh, well, thank you very much to all the presenters and uh, also to all the participants. We had a quite uh, an active chat. Uh, I think we have 20 minutes to address questions. So we're going to select uh, uh, three or four for the first round. And then if we have more time, we'll uh, try to address uh, the remaining questions. So uh, we have, first of all, a question that I think it can be probably addressed by Wang because she has presented uh, uh, the study that was conducted by, by UNESCO. And uh, the, the audience is asking if any country conducted national examinations virtually as scheduled for yes. candidates. Uh, yes. Then we have another question for Zambia, uh, which is on their response on learning assessment. Uh, which ones are you, in, are you using in Zambia and if teachers are able to develop online assessments and mark them? And particularly, if you can briefly share how the vulnerable and those with special needs are included in this response. Uh, then we have another question, uh, which is for Zanzibar, it was just posed. Uh, what is the purpose of the questions circulated to the teachers? And are they for assessment or revision? And do teachers monitor the work of learners? So if you can elaborate a bit more on this. And finally, I think the, the first question for the first round, which is uh, for any one of the presenters to, to, to respond, uh, it's from Ramia. Uh, she's asking if uh, uh, how developing countries are approaching uh, the, the, the question of, uh, of distance ass assessment vis-a-vis uh, -vis the high medium tech or low no tech options. For those doing low no tech, what have the challenge challenges been? So over to you. Salut. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Davide. I think I can give the floor to Huang, who could uh, provide some yeah. elements of answers. Thank, 
Thank you. Thank you very much. I um, I just would like to um, respond quickly to a question that the, um, that was raised by the participant. This is about uh, um, countries that have um, conducted um, exams online, right? If I understand correctly, mm -hmm. from our uh, um, from our quick uh, rapid assessment um, conduct uh, globally, um, there there were eleven countries um, that have organized a high stake exam online. For example, in Europe and North America, uh, it is Belgium, but in uh, Wallonia and Brussels, Estonia, Italy, UK. Um, USA, uh, US. In Asia and Pacific, um, there are three uh, countries at that time, Cambodia, Myanmar, Pakistan, but it's more in the in the region of Hiba, Batun Khwa. In the Arab re region is Egypt, in Latin America and, and the Caribbean is Mexico and Venezuela. So I, I hope I, I answer your question. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank and you. there, there are other questions which are addressed to, to the other speakers. For example, I remember the one dealing with the questionnaire, which is addressed to to you, right, Juma. Yes. And the others yes. can can yes. jump in. Okay. Whatever. Yes. Uh, if if I I got it well, uh, the question was how do teacher monitor learning assessment of the student? Am I right? uh yes uh you you got, it. Right. you got it yes that's right that's right how right. are they doing and and how to include the vulnerable and those with special needs wow so so far as i say there there, there are schools that has been directed by the minister of education uh, to form groups through whatsapp so every secondary school have got uh, groups monitored by teacher through WhatsApp. And the teachers are the ones that who send one, they send very brief notes, who send questions to the student, and then student respond and teacher do marking. So that is very clear. All secondary schools are all involved. My doubt is only those secondary schools in rural area. But but once we finish these sessions, I will talk to the director of secondary school to, to ensure they monitor how do rural rural area, especially schools, have full involved with these programs. But for urban, I have no doubt at all, they have full access and teachers do monitor very well. But I'm not sure of the number because schools might be having a nearly 200 student. Let me do maybe a quick survey to see how many out of 200 respond to the question that posed to their teachers. That's another baseline that I need to do, sir. sir. But uh, how do the people with a disability are being involved? That is not is tough a bit. I need times to check uh, whether how do these people are being monitored. Because in my examination council, we have a data for the people with a disability. We have a data with the people who are very blind, with low vision, and others. But for these programs, then I need to go further. I need to talk to the uh, unit responsible for disability within the Ministry of Education so that we can do assessment, we can do a follow up. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello. Hello, this is Angel. Can I can I also go ahead? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, if I got the questions correct, one was talking about how the uh, the, the vulnerable, especially those who have uh, faced challenges, and also how if the teachers are also um, developing the assessments. I'll start with the one uh, dealing with the vulnerable. Uh, those uh, we 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 call them the the, the, the differently uh, abled. Yes. What I see is that, for instance, uh, the programs that are aired on uh, television, in the corner, there is uh, for those who are visually, uh, who are um, 
hearing impaired, there is oh, someone with sign language, uh, in, a sign language interpreter is on the corner. With, with Every time the television uh, a program is being aired, there's someone interpreting. For those who are, who are visually impaired, they can hear, although they can't see, but they'll hear the material, they, they, they hear what they're saying. Maybe the only thing they're missing is seeing. And then for those who are physically challenged, it's we are not very, if they're able to hear, they'll be able to hear. But if they're able to, again, uh, to, to see, they can see, except maybe they need to be, this is something we haven't uh, gone into the different homes. They need to be at a position where they're able to see the TV or the radio, or at least they have a phone with them. But for the other impairments, like visual impairment and um, and uh, uh, the hearing impairment, we have uh, interpretation taking place, especially for those who who cannot hear. Now, in terms of teachers being able to have assessments, in fact, that's the order of the day. Even what we have launched as Examinations Council, which is called the Smart Revision Platform, yes. we get the, a pool of uh, assessments there, and then the teachers that are discussing the solutions, helping the learners. And in the debate, the learners are also following their learning. And uh, even what the teachers are also sending, they are sending in such a way that, they, they, okay, for, in fact, even what we use, the teachers that make those assessments. So we encourage the teachers to do that, and they actually do that. But one thing I want to comment about in terms of vulnerability is the rural areas. We, Although we are saying that it's highly connected in terms of uh, uh, signals, we are not sure if some of the children that are in rural areas have got the phones that can get the materials that are being sent, especially materials that require images and all that. So I think that's where, but in terms of TVs, again, uh, there are some places where the signal be, may be there, but maybe they have no electricity and, that, and therefore it becomes difficult for them to, if they don't have solar panels and all that. So a challenge is there for a few people, especially in very remote areas, even if signals are there, but it's the facilities that they may not have to receive the signals and it, uh, utilize it. I think those are areas where a help can be needed so that um, we see how others are doing that. So I think for now, I hope I've, I've uh, addressed the two questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Angel. Uh, I was asking if Dr. Pedi have has something to say. Okay. No, so far nothing to add to what colleagues have said. But what I may also say is just a question. In the situation of online testing, Already in situations of face-to-face, -face, we are facing difficulties in invigilating examination. And how will it be when we come to online testing? We know how the situation is, especially in Africa. So that's my worry. Okay, maybe Hungi from could the, have a, an, an, Yes, go ahead, go ahead, please, I'm sorry. Yes, from the people who were asking questions, I'm all also wondering, what do we do in situation of uh, when we have learners with a physical disability like uh, blind people and people who cannot hear? What do we do? I think online assessment will come with challenges. And I would like to localize also this assessment in Africa, where when I was talking already, you have this problem of internet. What about these people who are working in poorer conditions? Thank you. Yes, very relevant question indeed. Most African people are I mean, experiencing that situation. Hungi, do you have anything to add on that or to? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I think Please. I can add one line and then Hong can also come in and help and anybody else. I, we agree that uh, there is a lot of challenges in Africa, especially with the uh, online testing. And that's what I highlighted in a uh, presentation, and also Hong said the same thing, that uh, it will require a lot of investment on uh, capacity uh, or ICT capacity uh, development for the teachers as well as the students, and also a lot of heavy investment on uh, ICT gadgets. So there are challenges, and uh, these things will keep coming up. We have now an opportunity, given the pandemic, it's a crisis, but it's also it can be taken as a, an opportunity to rethink about how we do things and how to cover everybody in the future moving on. So that uh, countries should be talking about, or us, we should be talking about um, ensuring nobody's left behind as far as ICT is concerned. 
as far as online learning and distance learning is concerned, so that may this happen again, we shall be better prepared. Over to you, Hong, or Salim. Yes, thank you. If Hong has something to add on that, before, before we go, we give back the floor to David Day for a couple of questions. Hong, do you? Thank, yeah, thank, thank you very much. Here in my um, presentation, I think I have already uh, mentioned um, uh, online, I mean, go um, when teaching, learning, go online, and so assessment go online. Um, um, there are consideration or, or challenges, especially in the context of low tech um, uh, or, or in, in the context of um, um, resources, infrastructures, constraints, like uh, in many countries in Africa, I would say. Um, the challenge is that, I mean, this is this is more common than to all country contexts, not just in, in, in those countries with uh, low tech or, or, or um, resource uh, constraints, uh, with resource constraints, uh, we know that not all subjects or competencies can be assessed online or even like a through, um, through a telephone, for example. So this is impossible. Um, also, when whether this decision or the consideration to go online, um, there are questions um, of uh, fairness and feasibility. Uh, uh, you know, so uh, and an inequality, inequity as well, um, given the digital device um, or, or in in those areas that, uh, that have less resources or capacity. Right. Yeah, so. The, the general kind of recommendation from UNESCO is that uh, if we go online, then the consideration must be um, must be uh, taken into account uh, and, and uh, for issues regarding equal access to infrastructure as well as connectivity, protection of personal data, security, integrity and online proctoring methods, transparency and students' digital skills and gaps. Um, so we have to 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 examine them and thoroughly these issues. And um, and, and and the last word from 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 me I mean, for, for for this question is that I mean there's no one size fit all uh, for for all um, uh, contexts uh, or country contexts. So um, really, I mean, we have to to um, to take into consideration I mean, these issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hong. Okay. So I think we have two minutes before handing over the floor to 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 Yumiko for the closing remarks. David, is there any hot question that you have in hand? Yes. Uh, thank you, Saliu. I think there are, there's a concern that was uh, expressed by several uh, participants regarding, it's more in general regarding school closures. So I don't know, uh, school reopening, sorry. Uh, and uh, I don't know if uh, maybe uh, uh, Wong again or, or, or you would like to address this and, and talk about the, the framework for school reopening briefly. Uh, then something else that was expressed by several uh, participants was the issue of uh, the role of teachers uh, in in facilitating learning and the difficulties that, that uh, uh, learners can face while grasping with, with new concepts and how this has been tackled in other regions. Uh, so I don't know if any one of the presenters would like to address this point. Uh, and finally, the issue of marking uh, in when especially in early grades and where uh, grades are not associated with promotion certification. Uh, if there is any country and uh, even among the audience that would like to address this question. How is, uh, what's the solution that was adopted in terms of, uh, of formative assessments and marking? Yes, thank you, Davide. Dear, dear speakers, we have one minute each to, to address those questions, if you have elements of response. Who would like to jump in? Pop. Probably even just quickly, um, because I mean we, we don't have enough time. But I, um, I, um, I, I will not let I me mean, address all the questions. But quickly on reopening, and here um, the focus is on the um, uh, accelerated uh, or, or tutorials. 
um, for for students um, uh, when school reopen. Um, this is I mean, this is related to um, to a phenomenon that that we we know or, or maybe some or, or, or you all know called a learning loss. Um, and um, in this regard, um, I would like to um, refer to the um, to an article by the World Bank recently when they talk about learning loss. Um, basically, uh, what it means is the um, or, or le the learning loss here refers to any specific or general loss of knowledge and skills or to resource for, uh, resources in academic progress, mostly mm -hmm. commonly due to um, extended gaps or discontinuity in the student's um, education. So apparently, you know, uh, under the current uh, situation of uh, massive school closures, um, it is highly uh, uh, likely that uh, learning loss um, will happen. Uh, so, um, um uh, as far as as um uh, the, the the response concern i mean one can can say it easily that i mean we have to have or the government have to to put in place measure to offset the learning loss when school reopen and uh in terms of the of the schedule uh, uh, we all know that the summer holiday or, or school summer break is is approaching very soon in many countries so instead of of uh, um, losing i mean, or, or, I mean for, for students I mean, to lose the, the learning during the, the the summer break probably i mean one option could be for many countries to 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 see it as an opportunity to expand the summer learning opportunities for all pupils and and students um so this is all about like uh, organizing um, the remedial, the catch-up classes or supplementary tutorials for students, um, if necessary. Um, so I, I, I stop here. I, I, I don't know if I have more time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe I'm sorry, I, I, I got muted. One or two minutes. Yes, one. Why? I, I, yeah, this is that you want to say something. Go ahead, please. Uh, I didn't hear what you said. So I said, if you have uh, any any element of response regarding the question that were raised, you have uh, one minute to to address those elements. Well, based on in our experience here uh, in Zanzibar, uh, we we might say we are still uh, uh, developing. Uh, material and support. Uh, so we still need to, there is a work to do for us. And I would like to share if, if UNESCO could have access of the materials or uh, whatever website, hey, it's welcome. Uh, but we are struggling to ensure, especially those students who, are, who will be sitting exams, uh, get access. That, that's our strategy. And the government has given us a full support, and uh, we have been giving airtime, the public radios, and uh, we're encouraging teachers to form groups in WhatsApp circulating. And what I said from the beginning that there is a need to monitor how many from the actual number of the student pass schools are getting access. That is a question to me that I need to share with my fellow my fellow brother here, so that we could get at least a response to see how we could move forward. This is only what I have. Thank you so very much for that clarification. Unfortunately, I tell is Hello, this is Angel. Can can I can I also come in? Can I come in? Uh, and Angel, Angel is... really 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, please. Okay, first of all, on the learning loss, here what happens is that the Minister of Education always conducts meetings where they estimate how much time was lost in terms of learning and what will be done if schools opened when they keep estimating like that. But then on the other question of formative assessment and marking, it's a big challenge for the lower grades. For the upper grades, it's easier, but the lower grades, I think we need to learn a lot when it comes to uh, the formative assessment and marking taking place, because these, the platforms we are using 
for the young ones, they are not very, uh, they haven't yet started using those, even if they are, but it's not as, as easy as the older ones. We need help from that point of view. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we're going to give the floor to the director of IPA, Dr. Yumiko Yukoveki, for the closing remarks. So Yumiko, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Saliu. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. I have uh, five minutes to um, give my remarks. Now, a learning assessment is a very important issue in teaching and learning. I think we all agree. And this was a issue made even more difficult during the school closure. So um, this session was not only uh, informative, but very thought provoking. We have seen a very, very active session. Not all the um, interventions were um, dealt with. I think some of the things like how can we um, assess the practical subjects and so on, that yeah, yeah. we have mm -hmm. to continue to uh, think, continue thinking about. But this is a great of what is a learning assessment and how could we do it even in the most difficult time of school closure. Now we have heard about the teachers' perspectives from EI, teacher support is needed, and even more so during the school closure. We also heard from Zambia's experience and the combination of a different methods to um, assess the assessment. And then also Zanzibar's uh, exam council's um, views on, and then the need for uh, support. I think the support is something uh, we have already started to provide, which is uh, information exchange and a sharing. And uh, in this um, webinar of about uh, 70, 80 people, you can see a lot of experts. So I think we can continue our discussion. Um, I'd like to thank Hong and uh, Hungi for excellent and informative presentations on, on the learning assessment and what is going on in the rest of the world as well. Um, learning assessment will be even more important when the schools reopen. We have to do a proper catch-up for uh, children who lost some time in learning. But I think it is very important for us to continue um, encouraging, advocating, and capacitating teachers, as well as parents and the communities to support children's learning. When you are supporting their learning, you are likely to be um, assessing. Um, I see that um, mothers and fathers, for instance, reading the books for the children and say, do you, did you understand what this word, do you, do you understand what this word means and so on. So the assessment is part of learning and the learning should incorporate assessment. So I think we can, uh, we can continue thinking, how can the learning incorporate assessment effectively? We have a big question such as how to assess learning of the marginalized and the people, um, learners with a special needs. That's a very uh, important questions, and I hope that we can continue to think and uh, have innovative solutions. I think there is. And uh, also another important uh, question is, how can we do the national exams uh, during the school closure? Uh, we might have to have a schools closed until the end of the academic year, and that in that case, we have to think of our national exams. Are we going to do it online or do we do, we do it in uh, other alternative ways? So this was um, a very interesting, thought provoking, informative, but um, I think we have uh, more questions than uh, before. So I would like to suggest that uh, we will have a second session on the learning assessment with a different act, different, uh, um, examples and so on. So again, I would like to thank everyone for excellent, excellent presentations and participation. Thank you very much. Over to you, Saliu. 
Thank you very much. That brings us to 90 minutes sharp, the time we were allocated. So, but I cannot uh, leave without uh, precising uh, that there will be another web webinar on the same topic with French speaking countries, maybe still another one with other countries, but what is sure, these French speaking countries will hold the, the, same, the same webinar. So for next Wednesday, we'll have a webinar on PVE. Uh, I mean, the information has already started being circulated. Uh, and then probably we'll have another webinar the other Wednesdays. So thank you very much. Thank you all for attending. Thank you for your active participation. Iqba is really very grateful to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Salu. Thank you, Salu. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye thank from you. Zambia. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye. Thank you, Miko. Thank you, David. Thank you well very done. much. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Bye bye. Hi, Baleli. Merci beaucoup. Bye bye. Hi, bye -bye. Hi you, Miko. Well done. It was really interesting. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Very important. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Bye.